well let us discuss the electromagnetic wave equation in terms of potentials that is scalar potentials and i mean electric scalar potentials and magnetic vector potentials now as you know the when we are interested to write the electromagnetic wave equations it must be a second order differential equations and when we write wave equations i mean electromagnetic wave equation it will have two parts that is consisting of electric and magnetic both the parts now if you're writing in terms of field it must be a second order differential equation in terms of electric field and the other equation will be a second order differential equation in terms of magnetic field those electromagnetic wave equations in various cases in terms of electric and magnetic field we have already seen in our previous classes now let us see how to write the electromagnetic wave equation in terms of not as field but as potentials so when we are interested to write in terms of potential the target should be that we want to replace the electric field and magnetic field in terms of the corresponding potentials now to do that let us pick up the maxwell's first equation that is divergence of e equal to rho by epsilon and if we consider the case for vacuum your rho equal to zero there is no charge enclosed in vacuum so therefore rho being zero divergence of e suggests that equal to zero that now the electric field there we can always replace that electric field in terms of the potentials that is e can be written as a minus of grad of i minus del by del 2 that how we have done in previous class we can quickly see that if you pick up the maxwell equations as i have shown in the bracket that is called up equal to minus del by del t that is the third maxwell equations and we have seen that your b is always expressible as call of a so therefore we can write that call of e plus del by del t of call of a equal to zero and here we will take out the space part out of d by dt that is d by dt in the second term d by dt of call a that space part will take out common so we will write that call of e within call of within bracket e plus del by del t has to be equal to zero and if you compare this call of within that bracket equal to zero with that of your second order differential operator identity which also we have discussed that is call of grad phi equal to zero that we can compare and see that the bracketed terms that is e vector plus del by del t can always be expressible as minus of grad phi and here the negative sign we have written it is because the definition of potential gradient for an irrotational electric field the electric field we are considering here irrotational so therefore we can derive from negative potential gradient so that imbibes the negative series will sign now therefore our electric field can always be written as two terms that is minus of grad phi and minus del a by del t where phi is corresponding to scalar electric field and a correspond to vector magnetic field mind it it is important to note that here the first term which we see that minus of grad phi that electric field it contributes the electric field because when we write the electric field as two terms one is space differentiation another is time differentiation that is e equal to within bracket minus grad phi minus del by del t the first term which we say grad phi is correspond to the field due to steady state charge it is steady state means it is not changing with respect to time and that contributes to the field which is conservative and non solid the fields is not it will you will not be having any call in the second term when you see d del by del t of a vector that correspond to the faraday's concern that whenever you bring a magnet towards a coil there is change in magnetic flow so therefore induced emf or induced current or induced electric field is developed so therefore that generates the electric field due to the time variation of magnetic flows and that is obviously solenoidal and non conservative it is because it is a kind of frictional force it is non conservative in nature so therefore coming back to our discussion that is divergence of e equal to zero for vacuum we replace that electric field in terms of the <coughs> some of the potentials that is minus grad phi minus del by del t in place of the electric field we write equal to zero now if you take away open the bracket then you can write it minus grad square phi minus divergence of del a by del t here i have inserted the space part then second equal to 
grad square phi plus del by del t divergence of a equal to 0. This space part I have taken inside that of the time. It is because space and time are independent. You can always exchange space and time for this. Now again, if you recall to the previous discussions that we put knowledge got condition the divergence of a plus 1 by c square del square phi by del t square equal to 0 which is the Lorentz got condition we use it is because we know that our potentials are non-unique in nature. So unlike the case of field which is uniquely defined for the same electric field we have large choices so many choices in potentials. So therefore when we want to solve the potentials solve for the potentials we have to restrict the number of physics into a group of physics and certain condition we must use to do that one. So therefore if you pick up the case of Lorentz gauge condition here then we can replace the bracketed divergence of A in terms of minus 1 by c square del square phi by del t square. So therefore our expression will reduce now to grad square phi minus 1 by c square del square phi by del t square equal to 0. And if you see carefully that is 1 by c square we can replace by mu 0 epsilon 0 by Hertz. It is because the speed of light as defined by Hertz equal to 1 by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So finally we can write grad square phi minus mu 0 epsilon 0 del square phi by del t square equal to 0 which is the electromagnetic wave equations in terms of the scalar electric potentials. Now in the same way we can pick the Maxwell fourth equations which will give us the <coughs> electromagnetic wave equation in terms of magnetic vector potentials. So if you see the fourth Maxwell equation which is equal to mu times j plus epsilon mu del by del t. Now in vacuum our j is 0 and mu becomes mu 0 epsilon becomes epsilon 0 so we reduce the expression to call of b simply equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 times del by del t. Now again our b is always expressible in the form of call a so therefore we replace that call of call a in the right hand side as such that is mu 0 epsilon 0 del by del t. Now if you recall to our discussion again in the second order differential operator we have discussed about Lagrange's identity and we will apply the Lagrange's identities formula to expand the call of call a and to write in the left hand side that a grad of divergence of a minus grad square a which is the value corresponding to call of call a and in the right hand side we will replace that electric field as we have imposed the condition that electric field can always be expressible as sum of two potentials that is minus grad phi minus del by del t and it is because as we have discussed previously in Gauss transformations when we use certain condition in between you cannot change the conditions the, so therefore when you use that electric field can be expressed as sum of the two potential that is minus grad phi minus del by del t in that case that condition is carried and therefore the Lorentz gauge condition is also carried out so in the next step we can use the Hortz experiments idea to replace that mu 0 epsilon 0 as 1 by c square del by del phi by del t that is the second term in the bracketed term so therefore we write it grad of divergence of a plus epsilon 0 mu 0 del phi by del t in that case we replace epsilon 0 mu 0 by 1 by c square del phi by del t now this bracketed term is nothing but the Lorentz gauge conditions so already we have mentioned the Lorentz conditions in our first case that is when we are deriving the electromagnetic wave equation in terms of the electric scalar potentials so that condition will prevail till the end of this discussions i mean you solve the problem so therefore here obviously the lorentz gauge condition will hold good so divergence of a plus 1 by c, i mean lorentz gauge condition means divergence of a plus 1 by c square del phi by del t will be zero in the right hand side what remains if you see that is grad square a minus mu 0 epsilon 0 del square a by del t square equal to 0 because we have joined the uh, first term in the left hand side and first term in the right hand side we have joined and similarly we have joined the second term in the left hand side and second term in the right hand side we have joined so therefore finally we got that is grad square a minus mu 0 epsilon 0 del square a by del t square which equal to 0 now these two expressions that is grad square phi minus mu 0 epsilon 0 del square phi by del t square and grad square a minus mu 0 epsilon 0 del square a by del t square equal to 0 these two equations together are called electromagnetic wave equation in terms of 
electric potential that is electric scalar potentials and magnetic vector potentials and we will see more discussions regarding this in our subsequent class thank you